So let me read that again. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, make money, sound a lot like us when we were talking about earlier this year, right? Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Yeah. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Mm -hmm. Instead, you ought to say the point of his plans going through over our plans is because he knows all things above our own thoughts, right? And he may be trying to protect us from something that we may not see. So at the end of the day, we should be giving God glory like, okay, if this plan didn't go the way I planned it to go or the way I expected or thought for it to go, yeah. then all right, God, you're still going to get the glory. Right. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Kenneth Allen Thomas, joined by my lovely wife, the one and only Jocelyn Thomas. And we're about to have another unshakable conversation, um, you know, and... Before I get into that, honey, before we were setting this up, so this is super live right now, y'all. While we were setting this whole podcast up, like it was like literally, it's always like a doozy for us um, because we don't have like a full team. Like we are the team, like that's it. And it's like, I want to talk about some of the obstacles that we face as parents with you know a special needs child and we got four boys in the house you know mm -hmm. so it's like i don't know who is for but i know it's going to help um you know some parent that has a special needs child you know the the fight to keep on going and being resilient you know so my first question to you is always you know what is going through your mind when we're, when we got to get something done we're trying to finish it and get the job done as quickly as possible because we know how rowdy our boys can be, right? What's going through your mind and how do you help, you know, a woman, a man, a family, a husband, a wife, a sister, a brother that's going through it right now? The first thing that goes through my mind is there's got to be a better way. Got to be a better <laughs> way. And I'm hungry, by the way, y'all. So y'all gonna have to forgive me in my crunching if I'm don't come crunching like he was crunching last night. I was crunching. trying to go to sleep. <laughs> you don't understand, you um, These grapes are so And what I would say to help a parent is at the end of the day, they're going to be grown. And you're not going to have these moments that in the moment may drive us crazy. But one day we're going to miss it because they're going to be older they're going to be living life on their own. They're going to be mature. They're going to be grown. They're going to be possibly living out of the house, you know, moving out of the house, maybe not Christian, but hopefully. Um, and you're not going to have these moments anymore. So as much as they may drive us crazy, loca and lo la cabeza, I, I like try that. to, <laughs> I try to just kind of remember that they grow fast. And so, yeah. You know, I know that's like a good term to always use and understand they do grow fast. See, she liked my grapes too, right? <laughs> but. Pause. Whoa. <laughs> Hey, yo. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Oh my God. Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know, we married, so, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, I don't even know my train of thought. I'm just going to eat another grape on that one. She said you hit the dog button on that, guys. Anyway, let's move on. Your week. How's your week been? It's been kind of hectic because I just feel like I just feel like it's just 
a lot with the boys, honestly. Like, being a stay-at-home mom is not easy, and it's not for the weak. Um, I know people think, like, oh, stay-at-home moms probably don't do much. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and so it is kind of difficult. Sometimes it can be a lot because you're trying to, like, make sure the boys are good. Make sure they go down for their naps. Make sure the house is clean and in order. Make sure you're... You know, getting laundry done and prepping meals for when they need to be prepared for um, just doing all the things yeah. all at once. Um, and then just making sure you don't forget the boys that need to be picked up from school or, or anything like that. You know, it's just a lot. So I guess just trying to balance and figuring out even here um, with this new space. Yeah. Space, um what things could wait, what things you could put a hold on. Mm. Um, I know that a lot of times people think that um, stay at home moms don't really do much at home, but it is hard work. And um, just trying to even balance when we spend time with God, when we have time for ourselves. Um, so it is just a lot. Um, but today I made it a point to just make sure I did my nails oh, no. because I was like, yeah. My nails is looking a little rough, um, but it's been about three days in the making. So three days that. in the making to do the nails. Yeah. And sometimes it's like that. I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always, always like skipping a day, skipping a day until you actually get the day. Right. Yeah. But you know what? I feel like we're adapting well here. Right. I feel like we are kind of getting into a flow of. You know, I don't. I wouldn't want to say like a routine necessarily, but we're getting in the flow of things. We're kind of getting familiar with, you know, the area somewhat. Um, I'm taking some driving risk and throw and going different ways, different routes to try and see which way is faster mm -hmm. to get to here or there or to the common places that we go. And I think that in transition, a lot of times, um, that's the the scariest thing because you're so used to doing things on a daily basis wherever you're from, that it, it can be quite scary for some for some people to, you know, go to that level. But I want to just say that I want to commend you because, you know, what you do is, you know, not for the weak at heart, mm -hmm. right? Taking care of the two babies, um, you know, like the youngest ones and the oldest ones or whatever, of course, because they like babies they sell mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. But like doing all of that, um, and giving me the grace and space to do what I do, you know what I'm saying, to provide. And I think that a lot of people um, admire that, you know what I'm saying, the that the dynamic of, it sounds maybe like a little traditional or whatever, but the dynamic of, hey, having like the husband works, brings home the finances, the money and stuff like that. He goes out to hunt and, and brings it home and, you know, the wife is there to take take down you know uh hold the fort down at home you know what i'm saying but i think that that's what real teamwork is all about and i think that's why we work together so well because we found like a like this kind of a balance in a sense where you're not really worrying about going out necessarily to make money like you do or whatever you know with photography and stuff like that and in printing but it's like you know, you give me the grace and the space and everything to operate so I can think freely on that, you know? So it's like, even though, um, you know, and I do my part, obviously, whatever to help with the boys, you know, taking them to where they got to go or doing the driving or doing the the one thing that you hate doing, which is <laughs> going food shopping, <laughs> you know? Yes, I do. But, but I think, like, what do you think that, you know, couples are missing? Do you think that couples are missing that dynamic, like, you know, because nowadays or whatever, you got both, you know, husband and wife that work, right? But do you feel like they're missing, um, you know, the balance in that? Is it more so? Because I grew up, my, like, in my household, it was like my parents worked. It's like, it's like almost like my parents put us, the kids, work, church, then themselves. Mm -hmm like husband and wife you know what i'm saying like that's what it looked like to me 
and you know my, my parents are, are have been divorced for some time now but like it's like when you when you have that dynamic of working together you know as a team and still keeping the love alive keep the spark alive and things in that nature it's like man like i think that that we work well you know in that aspect do you think that other people are missing that like um i truly think the biggest thing is balance I think if you don't have a great balance overall and you're not prioritizing and making sure that your priorities are straight and in order, mm -hmm. I think you're going to miss it somewhere huge and then it's going to be a problem. I know for us, there's times where like some days it's like, oh my God, like I know we're here together all the time, right? And if you're not out or working, it's like we're here, mm -hmm. you know, but we're and we're constantly communicating the, throughout the day. We're constantly okay. talking, you know, and that's great. But then there's times where I feel like, OK, hold on. There's been a couple of days where we just haven't had a moment to just be wrapped in each other's arms, like with no interruptions, yeah. no, you know, yeah. and and that's necessary. Yeah. Um. So I feel like sometimes, you know, every household is different, obviously. Um. And everybody's needs are different. So that's going to look different for everybody. You yeah. kind of got to do what fits your home. Yeah. But at the same time, in doing that, just not forgetting the most important things. Um. I know for us, obviously, our kids are important. Home yep. is important. Our finances are important. Yeah. But number one, our God is important. 100%. So we make sure that we don't go a day without spending time with yeah. him, worshiping, praying, reading. Yeah. Um, And then you and I make sure that we're at least hugging throughout the day, yeah. touchy feely throughout the day. Yeah. And when we can get a date in, yeah. Yeah. And when we can't get a date in, we're at least spending time in the room together or yeah. just doing something intimate. And it doesn't have to be intimate with clothes off all yeah. the time you know yeah. we're just making sure that so i don't feel like we lack in that mm -hmm. even if we can't go out per se and have a date or a romantic date you know all the time i don't feel that we lack each other's presence or just sharing moments like that together yeah, for sure you know one of the things that I, I encourage husbands to do right like you know, I quote the I, I quote uh, Smith Wigglesworth all the time. Um, he says, "I never go uh, thirty minutes. I never go. I never pray more than thirty minutes, but I never go another thirty minutes without praying again." Right. In other words, I'm taking God with me throughout the day, and in the same sense, I believe that as husband and wife, we should be able to take each other with us throughout the day, even if I'm, you know, on the road somewhere, right, or if I'm on a plane or something like that yo sending those texts throughout and He's constantly, constantly checking in constantly checking in or setting a quick i love you or an emoji yeah. or emoji whatever the case is to to keep it to keep it going because what you don't want to do is just get into a a routine you don't want to get into a routine of where it becomes super stale stagnant and you're just your expectations become excuse me your expectations become quite low because you're like all right it's just what it is. I'm just coming home. I'm just going to cook dinner. We just going to get in the bed. Yeah. Oh, we just make love. It's boring. It's doing it, you know, and it's like. Same thing, different day. Same thing, different day. Like we like the one thing that I love about us is that we, we know that there's more out there for us. Right. And I say that as in not, not what we want but what god wants for us to do right we know that there's more even like being right here we know that there's it's just more work to do like it's time to we got to ramp it up even more we got to go to another level right we're not just going to be comfortable in this space and while it's good and we say thank you lord we appreciate you lord we know that there's more so that means if it's more for us here to do it's more for our marriage yeah right? it's more for you know, our parenting and doing things with our children and things in that nature that we got to make sure that we're constantly saying and taking God with us, you know, everywhere we go. I think another great thing that I love that I think would be beneficial to couples if they don't already do is for us. Um, 
every every time I feel like I am too busy to like do something, you're right there to pick it up. Yeah. And it's not like I have to voice it to you mm-hmm. or you have to voice it to me. For instance, like, you know, if I'm exhausted, super exhausted, like I love cooking. Mm-hmm. I'll cook every day cool. if I had to, if I could, whatever the case is. Um, and yes, sometimes we do like to eat out, but if I, if I had to choose overall, we like to eat at home and we like to cook. Right. Yep. Um, but if I've been running around all day and I pulled out meat and you see the meat out, you, I don't have to say, hun, can you cook dinner for us? You will automatically just go and That's start right. dinner That's or right. dinner or whatever the case is. If like you see the baby needs a diaper change, I don't have to be like, hun, I'm busy. Can you change the baby's diaper? Like right. you're right on it. Like where I lack, you pick right up. Where yeah. you lack, I pick right up. Like we're literally a team. That's, That's what right. teamwork is. It's never like, well, I worked all day. Why can't you whatever yeah. X, Y, Z, or I've been with the kids all day. Why can't you blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all, we're, we're just very, open and willing yeah you got to be open and willing yeah to just fill in yeah. let's take note fill yes. in where 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 there's a lack you know yeah. just pick it right up so i do love that about and, us and and that's that's what we that's what we call you know teamwork leadership right you got to be able to help one another out don't just put everything all on one person because then that individual is going to get super overwhelmed. And if that individual gets super overwhelmed, then more problems start to, you know, um, you know, enter into the fold, which is what we don't want. Right. Yeah. So I'm always thinking like, all right, can I help my wife in this area? Can I help my wife in, in that area? Um, have I been working or whatever a little bit too long? Does she need a break? You know, and sometimes it's like that, like where I can get caught up in the fray or whatever of working so much that I'm like, dang, like, let me let me pause for a second. Like when we was in the old house, I would just come upstairs just because I've been down there for a couple hours. So always making sure that, you know, those check ins are well, right, that you're good on your end. I'm good on my end, picking up slack wherever we need to pick up the slack and just understanding that. You know, sometimes your your spouse is just going to need a break. Like we're we're human beings, we're not robots. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I wanted to jump into something though, right? Because I feel like you know, um, you are, you know, everything that I've wanted, right? In a woman, or better yet, you are everything that God has wanted for me, right? Because we can all attest that. At some point in time, maybe in your younger years where you've dated somebody, mm-hmm. you thought that they was the one in everything that you wanted, everything that you ever imagined. And then that person turned out not to be the actual one. Right. Mm-hmm. You, quote unquote, manifested this individual, which we're going to get into that in a second. That may trigger some of y'all or whatever. I'm going to just keep it real. But anyway, it's like you imagine the type of person that you want, the life that you want. In all of that. And then it's like, it never turns out, and I say never, but it didn't turn out the way that you imagined. And that's happened to me plenty of times where I think I, I meet somebody, you know, everything sounds good, everything looks good, everything feels good for, you know, the, the season. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we take this wild turn. What I can say is, A, you're the, I've been with you the longest. Like, I've never been with anyone, you know, as long as you. So it's like, We've been over a decade and everything at this point now. It's like, man, like it is really possible, right? Yeah. Now, it's nothing wrong with what you imagine, right? But here's where I think we make the mistake, especially when it comes to relationships, when it comes to um, material things, when it comes to destiny, when it comes to purpose. We make the mistake of we imagine and want these things to happen and we don't necessarily align all those things with God's will for our life. And this is where like, I know there are a lot of people that are into the whole, I manifest my dreams type of, you know, talk. Mm -hmm. And I know when I say this, some people may feel offended because they feel like, well, I did manifest my dreams. I did, I did. You did not. 
right? You you may have had the idea, you may have had the passion, you may have spoke positively about those things, but however, what God has already placed before you, he already knew that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So did you really manifest that or was it already set before you to achieve along your journey, right? Because here's the deal, you know, God is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. So if he's the beginning and the end, he knows everything mm -hmm. in between, right? So are you really the one that's manifesting this or was it already set and destined for you to go ahead and achieve, Yeah. right? It's a difference. We can we can be um we have to be careful when it comes to using the word manifest because it's saying if you man if I manifested this and I now you're making it about you. And I feel like when you when you when you're saying that, what comes to mind is you taking the glory. Mm -hmm. You're taking God's glory. Yep. And none of the glory belongs to us. All of the glory belongs to him. Right. And so when you're speaking, I think that's what comes to my mind. You're yeah. trying to glorify yourself when really you should be glorifying the Lord for whatever it is that he has placed in front of you and has allowed you to receive. Yeah. It, and that's the key word allowed. Like I like he allowed it to happen. So again, you can you can one can sit there and say, OK, well, I did imagine this and it came true, right? Well, you didn't necessarily manifest the actual individual that came into your life or these things specifically, right? There was, there was a, an idea that was downloaded into your mind, into your spirit. You were attracted to it. You entertained it. You went after it. And if it was God's will for you to have it, he lets you have it. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, how many times has God blocked you from things that you wanted and you didn't get, right? The the car that you wanted that you never got, the house that you wanted that you never got, the opportunity that you wanted that you never got, the man or the woman that you wanted that you never got. So all I'm saying is that we got to be careful when we talk about manifesting and things like that. And, you know, we what we should be doing, right? What we should be doing is like Philippians uh, chapter four, verse six to seven says, do not be anxious about, about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition yes. with thanksgiving, prayer and petition. What is a petition, right? Mm -hmm. A petition is, hey, like, can you sign this petition? Because I got this idea. Mm -hmm. And if I get enough people around this idea, it could possibly happen to support yeah. it. Right. So I'm petitioning to the Lord as in, Lord, this is what I'm asking for. Right. But with prayer and thanksgiving, present your request to God in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here's the thing. If it's the peace of God, it's not our peace, it's his mm -hmm. peace. Right. So, God, I want peace. No, you want my peace. No, I want peace. No, you want my peace because your peace is different from yeah. my peace, right? Mm -hmm. I want, yo, so the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Like, so my understanding is not God's understanding, right? And will guard your hearts. Why? Because we're emotional. Yeah. So if we have God's understanding, if and we take on God's understanding and we take on his peace, Versus our understanding and our peace, because our understanding and our peace makes us emotional. It's a p. It'll be it, it, that peace will be a peace that where you don't understand where the peace is coming from because in a good in a in a good season of your life you can feel that peace yeah. and you'll be like oh I feel this peace because I'm in a good season, but the point is to have that peace when you're in a chaotic season mm. in turmoil in a storm that's why it says that understanding part because it's going to be a peace that you can't even understand you get what i'm saying so like that peace only comes from god because in a storm in the midst of the chaos you're still sensing that peace it's not like in 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 the storm we're supposed to well, it's a storm, so I guess the peace is gone. No, the point is that in the storm, you're still sensing that peace exactly. because it comes from God. Yeah, That's why we can't understand it. And, and people are going to look at us like, you're in the worst storm of your life. How are you sitting there so peaceful? Yeah. Aren't you supposed to be crying, mourning, grieving, all of that kind of stuff? No, because it's the peace that comes from God. That's it. 
and 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 this is and that's that's the key, right? We can sit in storms and we can go to sleep and we can be at peace, but it's not our peace. Mm -hmm. It's his peace because he is the one that calmed our bodies down. He's the one that took away the anxiousness. He's the one that took away all these things so that it's his peace that calms us down in the middle of the storm, right? Listen, if, if we really think about it if we sit here and say oh yeah we manifest this and i manifest that then you, yo stop lying because at the end of the day you don't even know what's happening tomorrow mm-hmm. you just have an idea but it didn't come yeah right james james chapter 4 right it says now, now listen now listen you who say today or tomorrow we will go hold on man he okay start on reading all right. Just cut that part out. Just yeah. start on reading the James part again. All right, so so check this out, right? So now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? Turn that down. <laughs> Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. So let me read that again. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, make money, sound a lot like us when we were talking about earlier this year, mm-hmm. right? Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Yeah. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Mm-hmm. Instead, you ought to say... If it is the Lord's will, right? Because we talked about that earlier. If it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. The uncertainty of human plans is one reason why we must submit to God's will. And you were talking about earlier what? I used to always feel like, you know, in conversations, it just used to irk me when, before I was educated, it used to irk me when I would say, oh, you know, I'll see you at this event or whatever the case. I'll see you tomorrow. And they'd be like, yep, Lord willing. I used to be like, Lord willing, like. Yeah. That used to just irk, irk me. I don't know why. It just used to just, I don't know, just drive me this crazy. Is BC, y'all. This is BC. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah. And, and I didn't understand it until maybe like a few years ago. I used to, I, I asked someone. Why do you say like, you know, the Lord willing? And they were like, because like, we don't know if we have tomorrow. Mm. If the Lord wills us to be here tomorrow, oh. then I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. But if he decides I'm going to take your life today, you're not even going to make it to tomorrow. Yeah. Then that's his will as well. You know? Yeah. Um. So like that says, we don't know when we're going to go. Mm. So you're making plans for tomorrow, but you don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. And we're not saying don't make plans. Yeah. Because the Lord is you know, is, is very, very, you know, encouraging when it comes to make plans. You should be in order. There should be a plan set in place, right? Mm -hmm. However, submit your plans to the Lord, create the plan, right? Make it plain, but then submit that to the Lord. And if it's his will for the plan to go through, then great it's going to happen. However, he may sit there and say, all right, well, I seen your plan. Let me make a couple adjustments and we're going to change this up. We're going to change that up and we're going to do it this way. But a lot of times with that, I feel like we get upset when our plan doesn't go the way we wanted it to go or the way we presented it to God. Right. Like us. And it's like, we're like, Lord, well, you you heard me. You told me to come to you. You told me to pray to you. You told me to present my plan to you. I did. Okay, but he may not agree with the plan. That might not be his will for us, right? Yeah. And we're getting upset. But at the end of the day, it's like the point of his plans going through over our plans is because he knows all things above our own yeah. thoughts, right? And he may be trying to protect us from something that yeah. we may not see. So at the end of the day, we should be giving God glory. Like, okay, if this plan didn't go the way I planned it to go or the way I expected or thought for it to go, yeah. then all right, God, you're still going to get the glory right? because there's something that you may see that I may not see yeah. that you're protecting me from. Right. And then let's say that the plan did go through as we want it. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, then we'll be angry at God. Like, why did you let this plan go through and didn't protect me from it? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, 
You know? I think that I, I look at it like this, right? People have to be careful with using certain words that are quote unquote universal, right? This is why the Bible says to study to show yourself approved. Not just read your Bible, study the Bible, right? And I feel that there are people that will get the reason why the, the whole manifest thing or whatever even popped up in the first place is just as my take. This is my opinion. This is not um, an actual fact or anything like that. But I believe that this is one of the reasons why is because a lot of people were fed up with church. People were not, not necessarily fed up with church. People were fed up with the um, with church folks and how they were being treated. Right. Mm -hmm. In some way, shape or form. But they weren't really ready to fully give up on God, right? But at the same time, they were trying to change what God actually already is. And it would change these terminologies. And for those people that felt just like them or didn't really know God at all, they would sit there and say, yeah, the universe. Yeah, like these crystals. Yeah, the, the, these uh, manifests and da-da-da-da-da. Listen, you, you playing a dangerous game because you're idolizing and you're worshiping things that are not of God, right? And, the, and, and God is a jealous God. The last thing that he wants you to do is worship yourself and mm -hmm. think that you are the one that's doing all things. Because if I blow, guess what? I blew, but I didn't even see the air that came out. I just knew it was there. Well, yeah. guess what? Where did the air come from? Right. How did it get there? I didn't put it there. Right. I didn't even decide to be here. So how dare I sit here and, and say, yo, yeah, it's all me. I'm manifesting this and I'm manifesting that. And because I thought about it and because I, I, I worked at it and because I did this. Yes, you work at it. Yes, you have faith. Yes, you have the confidence. But faith without the works is what? It's dead. dead. Right. But at the same time, what we got to understand is it's somebody that's willing you and putting a battery pack behind you to, to push you forward. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I I think when when you were talking, I just kept sensing and hearing the word manipulation. Mm. Like a lot of times we try to manipulate God to do what we want him to do. And we try to manipulate his hand in doing our plans. Yeah. We want our plans to prevail, not knowing that he already has the better plan. He has the best plan for us. If we can just surrender it, put the plan out, but always say, Lord, if it's your will, yeah, may your will be done. Let your will be done. Right. And that's the key. This is what we want y'all to take. Stop saying that you're manifesting things. Right. And start saying, well, if it's the Lord's will, this is my heart's desire. And be OK with the fact that the Lord just may say no. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the hard part. We don't like rejection. Many are the plans of a man, but it's the Lord's. It's the Lord's will. Will that will prevail. That will prevail. Right. And trust. Just trust the fact that his will is much better than than ours. Like, I mean, listen. I'm not going to go too deep into the political game or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that there's, it's a very touchy topic for a lot of people, right? And you can almost barely have a deep, genuine, deep decent political conversation without people being in the uproar on what side you're choosing, what side you're picking, and this and the third. Let me just say this, yo. Like, you may not have liked the answer of what, you know, the majority of America chose, okay? But you have to ask yourself the question, how was life 10 years ago? How was you living? How are you acting? How are you moving? How was it five years ago? How was it today? Did you, you know, just because there are certain laws that are set in place, right? How much do they really, really, really truly affect you? Now, I'm not saying, I'm, not, I'm trying to be sensitive here. Because I know that people take to heart. But what I'm saying is, is open your mind up for a second, right? Everything that you do in your life, there's not a law alive that can stop it unless it is the Lord's will, right? And if it's the Lord's will, you have to look at it from a standpoint of, okay, Lord, well, why is it happening to me? And for what reason? Because at the end of the day, I want to give you glory, even in the midst of a tough, tough season, a mm -hmm. tough battle. I want to give you glory. If we go in with the mindset of I want to give God glory, I want to be intentional about how I move. It doesn't matter who's in the White House, because at the end of the day, they're human just like you. 
They put their pants on just like me and you. They eat food just like me and you, right? There's no real difference, right? They don't have the, they don't really technically have the power to do things or whatever that they claim on the internet, right? So what my encouragement to people is this, right? Open your mind up, right? And understand that all things work together for the good of the Lord, all things, right? And if you believe that, then it doesn't matter who's in office because you know that there is not a, whatever is set for your life in particular, right? Whatever set for you is for you. Nobody can take it away. It's been proven time and time and time and time and time again in, in the course of history that people's destinies have been prevailed, you know, or God had prevailed or God willed it because he wanted it to, not because who was in office. Not just that, but in like when you're, as you're talking, I just, what comes to my mind is this life on earth, we're just passing through. Yes. We're just passing we're just through. passing through, y'all. <laughs> And is for a short time. Short time. That's it. We're here today, going tomorrow. Right? When we get when we get to the heavenly places, who knows? We may not even remember all of that happened here. Right? And that's why Solomon was so wise with his words. And one of the scriptures that I love is the time and a place for everything. Yes. It's a time to mourn and it's a time to be happy. Right? It's a time to joke, you know, and it's a time for this and that. So it's like eh, Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not trying to be like, you know, insensitive to people because no, I get sure. they take it to heart they get, they take it to heart and I understand it. And I get it. But I just say just look at it from a different perspective. Isaiah chapter six says this, right? Um he in Isaiah, he, he was, um, he had saw the cherubim. And when he saw the cherubim, he ended up, you know, saying to the Lord, like, you know, I'm unclean. I'm unworthy, right? I'm paraphrasing. And I have unclean lips and I'm with people that have unclean lips. The cherubim then goes and grabs the tongues, right? And grabs a hot coal off of the tongues, mm -hmm. uh, with the tongues, and then touches his lips, right? And as he touched his lips, he ends up telling him, Go in peace, right? In other words, your sins have been forgiven because Isaiah went ahead and repented, right? And then the Lord is saying to the Holy Spirit and the Son, who shall we go? Who, I mean, who shall we send. send, you know, to talk to the people? Isaiah then says, here I am, Lord, send, send me. me, right? He didn't say, here I am, Lord, I will go. Mm -hmm. He said, here I am, Lord, send me. Because if you send me, then I will. I know that you, I it was your it will. Was from you. It was your will to go. <laughs> And then what shall I say to them, right? He then says, tell them to shut their eyes, close their ears, harden their hearts, and shut their mouth. And then turn back to God. In other words, let me do a work in them so that they're not in their feelings. I just wonder if people would shut their eyes, close their ears, shut their mouths and harden their hearts to the ways of the world and then turn back to God. Imagine what God would be able to do in you more than you can ask, think, or imagine. And just that scripture right there, mm -hmm. I'll do things more than you can ask, more than you can think and imagine. So who's really doing the manifesting mm -hmm. right here? It's always been him. And when we sit there and claim that we're the one who's doing the manifesting, no, 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 no. I'm going to do things more than you can ask, think, or imagine. There ain't yeah. nothing that you can do that is going to outserve me. I'm the I'm the one that's going to serve. I'm the one that's going to bless. You can't outbless God at right. the end of the day, you know. So I just think that um, for the people out there that I don't know who this is for. I don't know who needed to listen to this, but maybe you've been somebody that said, you know what, I got the the relationship that i want i got the car that i want and it's all because i i did it i would be careful and i would give all honor and praise and glory to the lord that's right because we we have this home because it's all him it literally is all him like there ain't no way we didn't even imagine this place like we did not no way shape or form 
we just said we just wanted a beautiful home. Right. But we didn't imagine, we didn't literally like, I man, like we didn't do that. And that, that's why we wake up in awe every day. In awe. We're like, wow. Like we just look around. Wow. Wow, Lord. Wow. Thank you, God. You know? Yeah. Like we never stop giving him the glory because mm -hmm. we know that it had nothing to do with us. Yeah. We don't want to touch his glory. We can't. We can't. So I feel like that's going to help somebody. I'm not sure who's going to help, but I know it's going to help somebody. Amen. Amen. So that being said, everybody, listen, um, I hope y'all enjoyed the conversation. I hope y'all enjoyed, you know, kicking it with us uh, today. And listen, we want to make sure that you guys go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. We're kind of still figuring out this whole uh, podcast space. Yeah. So come along for the ride. Join us in our community. We switch it up a little bit because we don't want to be in a routine. Yeah. Really fast. It's crazy that you brought up routine today because um, this morning as I was getting myself ready, I was doing a little vlog and I was thinking to myself, every morning, I don't spend time with God the same. Yeah. Some days I'm in the prayer closet. Yes. Some days I'm out back. Mm-hmm. Some days I'm at the table reading. Yeah. Some days I start with prayer. Yeah. Some days I start with worship. Yeah. Some days I won't do anything until the nighttime. Yeah. That I read a devotional or I worship throughout the day. Like it always looks different. Welcome to our house. Yeah. <laughs> it always looks different because I don't want to get too familiar with God yeah. and like, oh, every morning I'm in my prayer closet right. spending time with God the same exact way mm. every single day. Right. No. Yeah. You know, not that I'm saying that there's something wrong. It's, with it's always a new day. Yeah, because yeah. listen, if, as long if you spend time with God every day, Amen. I'm just glad that you do it. Amen. But I'm saying for me, yeah, I like to do things differently yeah. when it comes to you know my relationship with the Lord. Amen. And where He has me yeah. in this season. Um. So I just thought that that was really crazy that you were talking about routines mm -hmm. because I was thinking about routines this morning. Yeah. Um. But. Go ahead. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. So listen, everybody, make sure you guys go ahead and like, subscribe, comment. We're building this this channel up. Yes. So, you know, share it with somebody. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Um, you know, and come on back. Come back for some good conversation. Uh, we're gonna be dropping these weekly for you. And as we kind of navigate doing this podcast, even with our four boys, it's yeah. quite interesting. Um, I'm gonna say, nowhere. if you can hear them in the background, listen. You can probably hear life. them. Yeah, you can probably hear them. You probably can't. I don't know. We'll just see how good the audio really is. All right. But with that being said, y'all, we love y'all. We're praying for y'all, um, and we thank you for joining us. We thank you for riding with us. Yes. Come along for the ride. Join the Unshakable community. You know, and let's get it. Let's get it cracking. Let's go to that next mm -hmm. level. Drop in the comments and everything, or DM us what type of topics or things that you want to talk about. Or if you have questions you about have us personally, like if you want to know something yeah. specific about us, something that like you want to know a fun fact about us, anything in regards to anything personal. Um, yeah. Ask us. Come on now. And lastly, make sure you click the link on our bio to go to our Etsy shop. You can get one of these cool, uh, man, oh, these cool man of God <laughs> shirts. <laughs> Um, so we got, we got the man of God that's on there. We got, uh, a lot of stuff that's, that's already this up there right now. This is not on there yet. Not yet, but, but it will be. Yeah. Amen. All right. With that being said, my name is Kenneth Allen Thomas for my wife, Jocelyn, Unshakable Conversations, Be Unshakable and all that good stuff. We'll check y'all later. Peace.